death is carved into the hearts of every single soul I encounter. I don't know if I may take part the shot. Before we get into this, I highly recommend you're sitting down uh, and you need to open your mind before listening to anything else I have to say about Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I'm going to be discussing specifically the campaign because I haven't experienced what I just experienced with Black Ops 3 in a good amount of time. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's genius. Now there's this huge stereotype set up by many gamers, myself included, when it comes to the Call of Duty series and especially its campaigns where the majority of it seems running down a corridor in a sort of on the rail shooter mentality with explosions and bullets whizzing by your face. This has been the sort of coined labeling that Call of Duty has gotten where a lot of people dismiss this series uh, as having any sort of value when it comes to its story, its characters, or uh, its gameplay. On the gameplay side, I'm more lenient in agreeing with that. Uh, the gameplay really doesn't change up that much. The devs attempt to go with more of a open level design similar to that of Last of Us, where it's not necessarily a corridor, but it's more of an open space for you to, to traverse and have multiple different ways of getting to your said objective. But it's not really fleshed out as well as it could have been. But let's talk about the story. Uh, me personally, uh, out of all the Call of Duties. I've always put Black Ops on a pedestal compared to the Modern Warfare uh, campaign series uh, and even Advanced Warfare on its own by itself. Uh, the Black Ops series in my opinion is the best written and deep series of the Call of Duty franchise. I fell in love with this series with Black Ops 1 in my personal opinion, a fantastic plot twist that they throw in at the end. I was actually surprised that the Call of Duty series actually created a sort of deep story. And the Black Ops series is more behind the scenes and shadows, if you will. It goes more into the psychological aspects of war compared to its counterpart, Modern Warfare, which is, in my opinion, more of a glorification of huge battles and modern warfare, dealing with the army and special forces. But with that being said, my expectations for Black Ops 3 campaign was actually pretty high. I wouldn't say I was expecting perfection, but I was expecting them to at least blow it out of the park with some amazing final tie-in with the other games. And if you followed me on Twitter, you will know that when I beat the campaign, I beat it with Moshi and Steven. I hated it. I thought it was trash. I ranted about it on Twitter for a good 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I was telling people, skip the campaign. It's horrible. It's illogical. It makes no sense. It's pretentious. But I found it very weird that when I went online and I was trying to vent these frustrations, I couldn't find anywhere I could vent them could barely find any reddit post talking about black ops 3 story and there's barely been any big news sites that have even covered a more in-depth spoiler session on the black ops 3 campaign people who play this campaign ultimately end up in two camps you have the people in the camp that absolutely hate it who feel like it's a big disappointment story doesn't make sense it's convoluted it's pretentious uh, the ending is absolutely abrupt and nonsensical i was in this camp as well for me it felt like they had done everything wrong opposite which made black ops 1 and black ops 2 campaigns so good in my opinion and when i'm saying good i mean from a perspective of a shooter after seeing this revelation the black ops series might low-key be one of the most underrated series we have in gaming so now that i have you on the edge of your seats trying to figure out how the hell i went from hating a campaign to praising it let me show you at this moment, I was ready to absolutely demolish this story and curse Treyarch for ruining what could have been a great series. I wrote in-depth notes explaining about why the last hour of the campaign absolutely made no sense and was illogical and was pretentious off the idea of psychological warfare. But what I didn't realize was that while I was over here pouting getting pissed, the campaign was laughing at me for being ignorant. One of the biggest things I'll say about this campaign is I highly recommend, unlike what I did, that you play it solo. 
I know the whole idea of the whole co-op is nice, and I fell for it too. I played with all my friends with co-op, but when you're playing with friends, you're distracted. You're talking with them, you're laughing, you're having fun, or in our case, getting mad at the game for dragging on for so long without making any damn sense. Ultimately, me being in co-op, I would actually say influenced my opinion on the campaign, and maybe I would have seen this plot twist better if I was in fact playing it solo. So again, highly recommend you play this on solo. So what is it? What? How is this actually good? I was actually searching for any YouTube videos uh, in the search box that were titled as Black Ops 3 Campaign uh, Sucks or something of that regard. And I was trying to find videos to see what other people were trying to say, similar to my belief, to see if they had different reasons why, or if they were the same as mine, seeing if I could find some sort of connection. I usually do this a lot of times when it comes to research. And I ran into this video. This video showed up a little bit down the queue, about maybe seven videos down. It said, the Black Ops 3 ending explained by the level loading screen. And I was like, what? I was like, no way. So I click this and I'm watching it. It's a three minute video and I actually download it and I'm going to actually break it down for you exactly what's going on because this is a very complex and I'm talking a very complex story. And honestly, it mind fucked me. When I got at the end of this video, my eyes were wide open. I had seen the truth and I realized I was wrong. I, I was absolutely wrong. Honestly, the game never tells you what the plot twist is and you pretty much have to find the puzzle pieces and connect the dots in order for you to really see the full picture. Something I felt off from the beginning was the way the missions were structured. I felt that the missions were weird and they, they didn't make sense. I was a lot of times confused about where we were and what we were doing and I thought that this was just due to bad level design and bad writing. But lo did I know this was actually done on purpose because in all actuality the first mission Black Ops is actually the last mission. Yeah, I know, you're completely confused. Let me explain a little bit further. If you actually slow down the first level's load up screen where it shows all that wall of text really fast, slow it down and actually read it. That text is actually a report from John Taylor, a report of what exactly happened during Ethiopia. You can essentially piece together the whole campaign. Lo and behold, the answers and the truth was hidden in plain sight. It says in the notes that there was a sole survivor of Hendrick's team, which was actually the team that you play as at the beginning of the game, that was brought in for cyber surgery. Again, this is the events you saw at the beginning of the game. But it says in the notes that they actually died on the operating table, meaning everybody on that Black Ops mission died. Nobody made it. It also states that Taylor tried to interface with the DNI of the sole survivor as a way of trying to guide them out of the coma and help them to recover, but it didn't work and the sole survivor of the Black Ops mission did in fact die. However, during this time that Taylor was interfaced with the Soul Survivor, which is you, you actually access Taylor's memories. This is again why the second level New World is sort of a tutorial with Taylor showing you certain scenarios. On the surface, you think of it nothing more as a sort of a virtual glorified tutorial, but in all truth, it's setting up the whole plot of the rest of the game. This isn't real. It can't be. What's happening to me? Right now, right now, you're in a medically induced coma being prepped for surgery. We're connected. All of this is a simulation inside our minds. The rest of the game actually takes place inside of your mind while you're dying. Doctor can straighten it out. Just need to recalibrate your meds. You're actually reliving John Taylor's memories, his previous missions before the whole Black Ops mission. And while you see Taylor as this sort of villain, it is in all actuality uh, a character known as Dylan Stone. Now I had to do some research about this, but essentially he was the actual person in real life that Taylor takes up in the dream who defects to the CDF, which is the sort of enemy faction, after he discovers the illegal activities by the CIA. Taylor and Hendrix are then sent in by the CIA, find his team, and kill them. This is what you do throughout the campaign, where you're killing Taylor's teammates. But these weren't actually Taylor's teammates, they were in fact Dylan Stones. And while you and Hendrix are hunting down their teammates, that in all actuality in real life was really Taylor and Hendrix. What you simply need to understand is that due to the fact that you're reliving off of Taylor's memories, you play in Taylor's place of the real life events and Taylor has to be placed somewhere in these sort of memory scenarios so he ultimately becomes the villain. It's a simple switcheroo. 
In addition, the whole concept and idea of this, this evil AI that's infecting everybody was actually fake. Think of it simply as a bug or glitch in the simulation. Again, this comes back to the whole idea that you should play solo because these are small things that you'd have to pay attention to notice. And I noticed them, but I didn't really think of them as anything. I just thought they were just bad writing or, or some way to justify the co-op. On multiple occasions, the player acts as if they lost their sense of time, and there's also moments of you being slightly confused as to what you're doing or where you are and how you got there. Hey, you still with us? Yeah, I just uh, zoned out for a second there. Hey, Hendrix, where are we again? Singapore. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a CIA op. This is their safe house. And it's also important to note that this actually happens long before you actually get infected by the evil AI. And on top of that, a lot of times I kept asking Oshi, Anon, and Steven, where were we and why are we here? See what's happening? Another big point, one thing I could never understand playing the campaign and everybody who's playing it just could not understand what was the purpose was the entire World War II level you played in Sarah Hall's mind. It was actually put there for a little explanation down the road that a person who had a dying mind could experience events in their mind that could last several hours when in real life it's only moments. Again, while it was just the example of Sarah Hall dying, it's also translated as the whole campaign that you're experiencing as the player. Another important thing, Hendrix. Now, I hated this character. I really, really hated this character. I thought he was illogical, he made no sense, but with the truth being revealed, now his motivations make pure sense. Since the first mission is actually the last mission of the entire campaign, there's a moment where Hendrix has a quick little dialogue with Taylor, pretty much putting in question Taylor's humanity now that he has all these cyber components and he's lost his humanity and in a way his empathy towards other people. Now you might be wondering what the hell this has to do with anything at all, and it's actually because due to the fact that this was the last mission, the missions before this were actually the ones of Taylor and Hendrix killing their former teammates. Again, the thing that you do in the campaign within the dream, right? So when those events were actually completed, Hendrix actually objected to killing the teammates as you clearly saw time and time again throughout the campaign, knew that it had to be done. Now you meet Lieutenant Cahill at the end of the game. I found it weird in one of the cutscenes that Hendrick calls him an amateur, and I was like, that dialogue doesn't make sense considering we already fought beside and had conversations with this guy before and even helped him at the beginning of the game. Khalil was a hero of the Cairo uprising. Then the uprising will truly begin. Ah! Citizens of Cairo, now is your time! Take back your city! Sandra, I need reinforcements at my location. Heavy NRC forces have surrounded us. Minister Khalil uh, Hendrix. Another important character, Rachel Kane. Her involvement with this is actually very complex as well, and this is very difficult to explain. Rachel Kane actually had a relationship with. Taylor, but since you're going through the memories of Taylor, she actually breaks up with Taylor after he decides to join the Cyber Soldiers program and he pretty much becomes an augmented cyborg. One of the most important items to notice, and I noticed this too, and I was wondering why it was focused on on a couple of scenes, is the bandana. You still seeing Rachel? If you go through with this, I can't be with you. It's going to change you. And quicker than you think. Your old life will fade away. This is who I am, Rachel. Taylor, how's our patient? As good as can be expected. I expect better. You should know that. Welcome back. That didn't work out. That's a pity. Mm. You spoke in the hospital. I thought your mind was made up. Again, one of the biggest issues I had with the final level, how you go from shooting yourself point blank in the head to all of a sudden surviving everything and walking out of the front door. That entire final level is fake. 
it's not real at all. But the point of the final level was to show at that final scene where you're up at the glass and you see Taylor and yourself switching in and out. That's technically where you're supposed to get it, where everything is supposed to make perfect sense and you realize that you were playing as Taylor the entire time and that this is nothing more than a dream, a memory, inception if you will. Again, this is the biggest problem with Black Ops 3 campaign. While Black Ops 1 was more direct, explaining its plot twist of Mason actually being brainwashed into believing he was actually Rezanoff, to even another game that goes into similar territory, Bioshock Infinite, where at the end they do a pretty decent job in explaining what exactly is going on. Black Ops 3 does not have that sense of closure. It kind of expects you to immediately put these pieces together, and the idea of them incorporating co-op into probably the deepest Call of Duty story I've played of all time can truly hurt the player's experience and give people that idea, including myself, that the campaign was absolutely trash. I can't believe it. I fell for this. I did not see this coming at all, and if it wasn't for this video, you would probably be hearing a complete opposite video right now, and probably a completely different score that I gave the game for my review. This campaign, no, the Black Ops series, might be actually one of the most slept on campaigns that gamers will never know about. I feel a video like this is crucial to help others like myself actually see the truth that going down that rabbit's hole makes you never want to come back. And that, my friends, is the genius of Black Ops 3's campaign. You ever say or do something that you can't explain? Maybe it wasn't you that said it. You that did it. Maybe it was someone else. Their thoughts bleeding through into your brain. My name. What's your name? 